it's Ben Housel here and here in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how we create first of all this outline effect um, using only free plugins in Final Cut Pro 10 so everything that we'll be using in this tutorial will be either a built-in plugin in Final Cut Pro 10 or something you can download for free and then we're going to have a look at how we add this animated splatter text behind now we're going to be using the Brett FX Power Tools Light plugin which is a free plugin and looking at how we can create this outline and then also use some things like color correction and transitions to kind of pull this layered effect together so there's going to be a few different steps in this tutorial lots of useful stuff let's dive in and have a look at how we set this up in Final Cut Pro 10. So the very first thing you'll need to do before you follow along with this tutorial is jump into your web browser, go to the Power Tools site and we're going to download the free version or the light version of BrettFX's Power Tools. And in the light version there's a bunch of very cool type animations, effects that you can use on your video such as the outline effect, also some very cool transitions and we're going to take a look at a couple of those and how we can work with those in Final Cut Pro 10. So let's jump into Final Cut Pro 10 and we're going to start with a brand new timeline. So I'm just going to delete everything I currently have on my timeline and we're going to kind of start from the top here. So the first thing we're going to need, we've got some drone shots here, we're going to grab this video of the city, that's going to be our kind of background shot and just to kind of start with we're going to drop the opacity of this down so that when we lay our image over the top it's kind of nice and clear and then we're going to go into our other footage here and we're going to grab this photo so this is going to be the kind of main subject of our video and basically we're going to cut this out using one of the mask tools in final cut pro 10 and we're also going to have a look at how we refine this so how you quickly prototype something in your video and then go back later when you need to kind of refine that outline um, this will save a lot of time it means you can kind of see how things will look before you produce that kind of really refined version for your final output so i'm just going to trim down this video on the main storyline here use option and the right square bracket do that and then shift and z and then the first thing we need to do before we get into adding the outline is just to cut out this person dancing. So we're going to zoom her in a bit on the scale. So I've come up to the inspector at the top right, make sure I've got this selected on the timeline. And then we're going to come to our effects across here on the right. And we're going to come into our masks. So scroll down, come into masks, and we're using the draw mask tool. This is super useful. It's going to allow us to create transparency. And obviously you can do this in Photoshop as well. If you're experienced at cutting out images in Photoshop, create it in Photoshop, export out a PNG with transparency. And certainly for still images, that's one workflow I use quite a lot. Now, one thing we'll be doing a bit as we're using this tool is zooming in and zooming out on this video quite a bit. So I'm actually gonna stretch out my video panel here a bit. And we will zoom to 400%, which is gonna take us right in and we'll come up to the top. And basically with this, I'm gonna draw dot to dot with my pen tool now that I've added my draw mask and we're gonna very quickly go around the outline. Now, as I mentioned before, we're gonna do a rough version of this and then we're gonna look at how we refine it. So I'm just gonna go around very roughly over some parts of this and then we'll look at how we refine that a little bit later on, both in its smoothness and also adding points to that draw mask a little later on. So we'll jump around this quickly and essentially you want to draw all the way around and then when you get back to the beginning we are going to join it back up to this first dot so when we're moving around i'm going to use this red box quite a lot to position this and we're just going to stick to this kind of dot to dot drawing and actually it's a little easier to draw dot to dot first of all and then to smooth these out later so we'll just go around all the way around here and we'll speed this bit up and then we'll come back when we've got this outline made so moving around once we come back to the beginning here we're just gonna join this right back up to the beginning And once you see on the first dot, the little round circle next to the pencil, that's when we're gonna create that transparency. So essentially, if we come back to fit here, we have our transparency created. Um, if we come up to our inspector and just click somewhere away from the draw mask layer, 
it will take away all the red dots. If we need to edit it, then we can come back and click on the draw mask and that will kind of reactivate all these red points and that's how we can come in and modify things and refine things as we see they're working well or working not so well. And then we're gonna come down to our effects again here on the bottom right and we're looking for Brett FX power tools and in here if we scroll down you can see we have the power tools outline and we can drag that onto our clip and it's going to add our first outline here so you can see up in the inspector I can modify the width of my outline I can drop this menu down here and change the color let's go for a kind of nice saturated yellow and we can also modify a couple of other things here as well so we can change the outline distance so we can actually bring the outline away from our dancer here and we can change the scale source as well and one nice thing as well here is that wherever we see this little diamond on the right hand side we can animate those things so one thing we're going to do a little later on we'll just kind of give a quick example of it is we're going to animate the outline distance so that we get a little bit of movement on the outline as well, which looks quite nice. If you have added keyframes or modified effects here and you don't want them on there, we can click the little hooked arrow to the right of that part of the effect and it will reset it. So if we see parts of our outline that aren't working, um, this is useful for all plugins and effects in Final Cut Pro 10, then we need to make sure we've got the right effect selected up in the inspector to modify it. So you can see I've got my outline selected here, but I wanna actually go back to my draw mask and zoom in. And then in here, I'm gonna set the scale source back to normal as well. So the draw mask matches up. So you can see I can move those points and it's gonna move the outline as well. And I find this is a nice way of doing it rather than worrying too much about the fine detail of it when you're first making your outline because now we can really see those bits of this outline that are going to cause us issues or cause us problems. If we right click here we can make this smooth or we can delete a point. So up here we might want to smooth this curve around the hair and then just modify it and we can keep going around just looking for spots where we either want it smooth or if we hold down the option key, we can add a new keyframe and we can kind of modify these and just make sure that we're not getting any of that background image in there. So we'll change that to smooth. We'll pull this up a bit towards the wrist and so on and so forth. So once we get into the fingers, we can kind of really look at where we need to either add extra points or just kind of tweak the points that are there Perhaps we need to make some of them smooth and move the location of them a little bit. Perhaps add a point here. And we can keep going around obviously and get it as refined as we want. If we have areas in our image here um, where it's not actually working, we can add a second draw mask. So if I come down to my masks here, I can add a draw mask. And we're gonna draw around this triangular area here. And this is where the layer order becomes really important. At the moment, we're masking out everything. So I need to drag this back up and actually just below my original mask. And then I'm also going to invert that as well. So now you can see I've cut out that yellow and we've got those two draw masks combined together to kind of make these multiple layers. And this is where if you do have an image editing application, these things might be a bit easier, but I like to try and keep these tutorials all in Final Cut Pro 10. So you can see we can go around, we can modify our image. If we come up to our layers here, we can deselect our draw masks and we have our basic image in front of our background. So we're gonna add a couple of other things in here too, but we're gonna add the type on here first. So I'm gonna come up to my type and generators effects up here into Brett FX Power Tools. And you can see I have the pro version of Power Tools installed, but up at the top here we can see the light or free effects that you have uh, in Power Tools. So we're gonna use this splatter effect, and I'm gonna drop this below my text. And basically, we wanna have this splatter effect animate on, 
and then we're going to nudge our dancer to the right and our text a little bit to the left. We want to have it all happen nicely in sync. So I'm going to just bring this up a little bit and we're going to select our splatter text first of all. I'm going to change the type. So we'll call this City of Dance. And so you can see animates on and our dancer here is right in the wrong spot. So this is animating on and around about this point we want our dancer to kind of animate in from the left uh, and kind of move on over to the right. And before I actually get any animation to happen on the dancer, I want to add some transitions at the beginning and end of this. So I'm going to come to my transitions across here on the right, and we're going to use the directional movement here. So we're going to drag this onto our clip. And so this is going to kind of animate this on. Now, at the moment, um, as with a lot of effects, it's affecting all the layers behind, which we don't want it to do. I don't want it to kind of blur the background image as well. I just want it to blur that. Uh, dancer in the foreground. So what I'm going to do is select the whole of this layer and do Option and G and that is going to create a compound clip. So basically it's going to group those together and now you can see the background sharpens up and my dancer is the only thing that's kind of animating on there. So let's pull this back a little bit and here as this dancer is kind of moving on, I'm going to select this and I'm going to turn on my motion properties here, my transform controls, add a keyframe and then move back a bit and then just drag this to the right so the text is framed nicely across there to the left. And I'm going to do the same for the text. So I'm going to have the text as the dancer starts to move, we'll select this add a keyframe for our position and then get these both to kind of snap into position at around the right spot. So basically we're going to have something like this. So you can see that nice movement, the kind of nice snappiness of the movement really helps to animate this nicely and kind of give it a nice look and feel. Let's change the background of our type. So we'll come to our type generator and we can change the background here. So let's choose a kind of nice magenta and so basically now this is what we've got nice little animation when this fades out at the end I'm gonna use option and the right square bracket to trim this down and then I'm gonna select my end point here and just use command and T so that it fades out nice and quickly at the end so this is kind of close to the, the finish of this and we're almost there. Now one last thing I would do here is just in the background here there's a lot of detail within my type so I want to select this background layer and I want to sort of mute it a little bit. I'm going to click done up here so I don't have my motion controls but essentially I'm going to come into my color correction and I'm going to lift my blacks up and I'm going to drop my whites down which is going to still mean I can see kind of what's going on in the background there but you can see from the original so this, the focus now is really on the, the kind of foreground image, what we have on the foreground. And I could make this lighter or darker. With this magenta, the darker version works a bit better. So we'll keep that detail in there. We'll drop this down. And you can see that we get that kind of nice darkness and the movement in the background, but we just don't have that same detail that's hiding the type there. So if we come back here. I'm going to add a keyframe for my color board. I'm going to come back to somewhere just as this animation starts and I'm going to set all my color board options to zero which is basically going to reset everything in my timeline. So now we have a nice kind of punchy image at the beginning and then when that animates on it drops right back and then when we animate off we can do the same. So we can come back here, add a keyframe for our color correction, come ahead a little in time, and then set these all to zero. And we can add 
and that's going to look quite nice. So we've got the movement in the background, but it's really easy to read our text, really easy to kind of follow what we're doing here. So that is how to create an outline on an object in Final Cut Pro. Um, I'm going to do one more thing here, which was the animation of that outline. So we move across to the right here, and then I'm going to double click into my compound clip. So we've grouped this clip together in a compound clip so that we can only have the kind of blurred animation on the dancer on that one layer. But I want to animate this outline so it kind of pops out from the edge of the dancer. So I'm going to double click into here. We'll stay around the same spot, come up to our inspector. I'm going to scroll down to the outline here. And I could double click up at the top here so that I see this at full height. And basically, I want to add a keyframe for the outline distance. And I'm going to add a keyframe for the width as well. And what we'll do is we'll move ahead just a few frames. We'll increase the distance. And at the same time, I'm going to increase the, the width as well. And we'll see how that looks. We'll come back. Let's play this through. And I think the timing of this is just a little bit off. I want that animation of this outline to happen a little bit sooner. So I'm going to double click in here again. I'm going to right click on this image here and show my video animation. And then I'm just going to select both of these. The speed of it seemed okay. I just think I want it to happen a bit sooner. So we'll pull those back, come back to our main clip, play it through. And I'm going to tweak that one more time. Nice. So when you're working on animation, see if it feels right. And if it feels right, then you know, you've probably got your animation and your timing and everything right. And obviously, once we add music and sound to this, that is going to change it again. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. So this is how to add an outline to our image here. If we want to export out a still image of this, we can come up to the share options. And I've added the option to save the current frame. If you don't have it, then you can go to Add Destination and you can add in this option for saving the current frame just by dragging it across here and we'll give you options for JPEGs and PNGs and all that kind of stuff. I don't need to do that. So we'll come up here and we'll go to Save Current Frame. I have this currently set to a PNG. I'm actually going to change that to a JPEG. Hit Next. And then I'm going to save this just to my desktop as a JPEG. That's perfect for uploading to YouTube as the thumbnail for your video. Uploading to Instagram. If you want to design images using the plugins and stuff in Final Cut Pro 10 that you've got, then it's a great way of kind of creating these nice punchy images with all the effects that you've got in Final Cut Pro 10 uh, for Instagram images or videos. Um, and it works really well. If you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10 or about this tutorial in particular, uh, then please leave a comment below. Um, I'm getting a bit better at answering all the comments and questions that pop up. Uh, definitely check out the light version of BrettFX's Power Tools. Uh, the link is below and all that kind of stuff. I hope you found this useful. And um, there's definitely a lot of cool free plugins out there from BrettFX and other kind of plugin providers. Check those out before you start to splash out on plugins and I will see you on the next tutorial.